Gigabyte Z77X UD4H on the bench here. I'm in the process of updating BIOS. So when you start the PC, you hit delete key and you get into BIOS. Then you press F8, that'll take you to QFlash. Then you find a USB drive which should be installed before you start the PC. Uh, the USB drive normally needs to be formatted to FAT16 or FAT32. Uh, and if you place the BIOS on the drive, you can go through <coughs> the options and uh, select the BIOS QFlash, hit, hit enter, it will uh, flash the BIOS basically. So the motherboard will then power cycle on its own, meaning it'll shut down, make sure the BIOS change is properly accepted. So when you flash a BIOS, uh, always, in my opinion, I always do this, I always go back into the BIOS, so this is the power cycle, uh, and then load up to my default. If your backup BIOS is an older BIOS and you are happy with the new BIOS that you flashed, the other thing you can do with this particular motherboard is switch the BIOS. So I'll switch to this backup BIOS now. Uh, and just flash that BIOS as well. We flick the switch to backup BIOS. Now we're going to basically go to BIOS and flash the backup BIOS as well. Press F8. That will bring up a Q flash option. Press yes. Now it will ask to update BIOS from drive. Just hit enter. That's the drive that I have that's already installed. I keep all the BIOS files in the BIOS folder. And I'm looking for UD4H BIOS. So just hit enter and OK. So you go yes to update and the process. Okay, now that the BIOS is flashed, it will verify the motherboard and power cycle and you have to go back into the BIOS and load optimize default. So you install your memory <coughs> into your PC and your um, Want to make sure that they're going to run at the rated speed and timings. <coughs> I'm using the Corsair Dominator 2800 memory. Um, best way to quickly check it, you don't have to run 3010, you can just run uh, 8M or, or so, and that will quickly give you an idea if memory is running stable. Uh, so, <coughs> in this instance, anyway, I'm running 3010M Super Pi. It's a Pi calculation software that specifically stresses computer memory, system memory and um, it's about to finish, this is the last loop ok so <coughs> if you get this message it simply means that it's uh, stable by the time this video comes out it will probably already be released a new version of the CPU Z uh, you can, if you're not familiar with CPU Z you can google it uh, but I'm sure most people are familiar with this software. So the new CPU Z uh, is quite a sleek interface. I think anyway, I like it. It's got an OC logo. Uh, anyway, so we were testing. We we're using a Z77 XUD4H motherboard at the moment. Um, this is the latest F2 2H beta BIOS that you can find on the website. And this is the 1400 MHz is the frequency, stock frequency of, or the rated frequency of this Corsair memory. Uh, and all four banks are populated, obviously. And it's the 2800 memory, the highest rated memory you can buy uh, from Corsair. I'll just show you <coughs> the settings that I've changed to get these courses to operate uh, properly. So I've gone into this section and all I've done is enabled 
XMP profile to profile 1. That's all I've changed there. And um, that's all left in auto, as you can see. It's all auto, so everything is it. Obviously, if you're going to be overclocking your PC, you might be changing some of these settings, but uh, at auto settings, this seems to be working okay. Uh, occasionally, with memory, high speed memory, uh, you may want to play with the sub diamonds. And what you have to do is change this setting here to quick so for DRAM timing selectable to quick. And all you have to do is change the timings on the first channel. Now, <clears throat> sometimes disabling XMP and manually putting the timings in that you see here on the left hand side into that section there, so you can key them in like that. Um, so just the first normally four and then the only other thing that you can try and experiment with are the slew rates so the read and write slew try and putting value number two or three on each of these and just match them whatever value you put on the read put the same on the write it's also a good idea to run some 3d benching uh, in this particular instance, I'll just um, <coughs> run 3D Mark 11. It has some system. It, you know, memory can affect the performance and stability of this benchmark. But uh, at the same time, we can test our Gigabyte uh, GTX um, 680 SoC graphics card. Uh, and um, you know, before you you know, put these things on a you know, in a PC. It's usually advisable. I, I usually would advise people testing it on an open platform first, as in outside the case. This physics test and the next combined test uh, test the system stability so <clears throat> that will usually it's quite an intense test and usually uh, fail if uh, there is some sort of instability on the system itself um, <clears throat> this test is uh, combines both graphics and CPU so usually if, um, you run a few benchmarks like this when you're testing on an open platform everything checks out. You can install the components into a PC and know that you'll probably, you know, you're highly likely to be headache free. Um, you'll have a headache free build I guess. Yeah, so here we go. It's uh, past uh, 3D Mark 11. So I've swapped over to uh, this new OCZ Fatality 1000 watt power supply to try it out. They sent it over have a bit of a plan to see what it's like and um, I'm also using <coughs> an OCZ vector this is the latest one um, that they've just released it's an Intellix based uh, controller you don't normally see sleeving like this on a on a power supply so every individual uh, as you can see, the 8 pin connectors, the 24 pin connector on the motherboard, the 8 pin, they're all individually sleeved and the uh, sleeving is really slick, I really like it, it uh, looks really nice. It's a pretty compact power supply as well, compared to <coughs> say something like this that I tend to test with a lot. That's the 1500 watt Cooler Master. So did a little bit of testing on this um, OCZ Vector, the new Intellix Base Drive Base 3 controller, I think it is, um, and it's been advertised to for read and write over 500, and it's um, pretty obvious that you know, with Christopher Canadian that it can actually do that. 
I did a test with all the power savings enabled in BIOS and I figured I might try redoing this test and fixing the CP ratio to 39 and basically running the disabling all the power saving features so the I'll the test is still running but it shouldn't really affect it much I'll just load the CPU-Z, the new, we have a new OC skin, you can download it on Gigabyte website or from CPU-Z uh, website, you can just Google that. As you can see, uh, it's running at 3.9, it's fixed, there's no change uh, in multiply, so it's uh, all the power saving features are disabled. And I've noticed that the speed has definitely increased, it was about 502, 503 read and write before now it's jumped to about 523, 524 that's a significant jump there and also I've noticed that the 4k jumped from about 75 to about 116 so uh, and also some of the random ones here are <clears throat> also quite a lot higher so if you are doing some overclocking um, with your PC you will see a better performance if you disable power saving features. This motherboard like most overclocking centric boards has some of the convenient uh, changes I guess or implementations such as uh, voltage measurements as you can see there the check voltage on V-Core, VTT, VSA, CPU, PLL, VDIM, and VDIM VTT, as well as the PC HIO. Uh, there's a big power button and a reset button and clear CMOS. They all come in very handy, so let's shut it out. started.